Finding love over 50 can be a bitch. This is Robert Manny, host of Guys Guys TV, and this week my special guest is YouTube host Silka Schwarzkopf. We're going to talk about Finding Love Over 50, Part 2. It all starts right here, right now on Guys Guys TV. You can also catch me on KCAA Radio here in Southern California, Guys Guys Radio, my worldwide podcast. And we're on UK Health Radio all weekend long. Guys Guys TV, Guys Guys Radio, thanks for your support. Okay, Guys Guys Radio, we're at the very famous interview portion of our show, and uh, it's my favorite part of the show, and we've got a great guest, a return guest, Silka Schwarzkopf, and she is the host of Second Act TV, which is a super popular YouTube <laughs> channel that helps people over 50 live their best lives. A lot of it is relationships, but there's so much more, women, men, all kinds of people listen to and watch it. And I've been uh, fortunate to be a, a regular guest on the show, and we have a great time together. And I wanted to invite Silka back to Guys Guys Radio because we really want to help people out over 50 because as we have our conversations together, uh, whether it's be between one of our segments and or before the next one or afterwards, we always find that there's a lot of stress that people are going through over 50 in terms of relationships. You know, with all the other stresses that we have going on in the world, finding relationships and reigniting relationships seems to be more difficult than ever. So welcome back to Guys Guys Radio, my buddy Silka, and let's get it on. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. That sounds like something out of the 70s right there. <laughs> <laughs> That was my little Marvin Gaye for you. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the, the topic we want to, and we're going to have a conversation to, today, everybody. We really want we really want to talk about what's going on with people over 50 um, trying their best to get into a new re re relationship. And like, Silke, you've interviewed so many relationship experts on your channel. Let's start out with, based on what they have told you, what's your take on what's going on out there these days? Well, it, it remains the, the big uh, mystery, you know, with uh, the communication between men and, and, and women <laughs> and uh, understanding each other's needs, uh, you know, different and like coming from different perspectives, perspect easy for me to say, perspectives doing that. And, uh, you know, a lot of that hasn't changed from when we were 20 and 30, depending on uh, how, how uh, old or young we were the last time we were on the market, so to speak, the last time we dated and what our mindset was at, at the time. So the biggest the mindset being a key word here, what mindset are you bringing to the table that are, is either helping you or hurting you in, in your search for love again? Now, what do you find? Um, why do you think women Let's start with women and we'll get to men. Okay. Why do you think women are having so much trouble over 50 finding new relationships and igniting them? Well, I, I want to go. I, I agree that there's a lot of women out there who are having trouble with that. I, I don't know that it's necessarily. I don't know if, if you know. It, yes, there are a lot of women. I don't know if it's after 50 or just because of what they're bringing to the table. They I, they probably had the same issues earlier on. I mean, the, the older we get, obviously, you know, the well, the dating pool sh seems to shrink for for women. Uh, there's more women than men. Uh, but you know, it still depends on who you're bringing to the table, you know, who is creating those issues. When you say, you know, there's there's problems out there, why is it for women? It's really, it, we're the ones that bring to the table whatever it is we're experiencing. Does that make sense? It it's makes perfect sense. And I think, and uh, help me with this, that sometimes, and we're going to get to men, but I think a lot of times women of a certain age some, sometimes sabotage their efforts because it, as people age, it, it, it's difficult to change. It's difficult to evolve. And I think it's very necessary that we continue to expose ourselves to new experiences, new people, and put ourselves out there. What often happens is people make their decisions as to who they're going to date uh, based on their friends. And, and even if they're over 50, the, the gals get together and talk about it or whatever, but maybe you, you worry about, is this guy, my kid's going to like him? You know, what's uh, my friend's going to like him? Are they going to make some judgments on him? D do you think that's a factor, the, the kind of the friendship aspect of it? Or, or th is there any type of pressure, peer group pressure in terms of who you date when you're over 50? The same way as it was when you were in your 20s? Absolutely. I, I totally think that. And, and to the, uh, you know, to the extent that you allow it to be again, 
I think that's uh, something that I certainly learned, you know, in my transition. I, I, I got divorced at 50, right? 51, I split up, 52 divorce. I'm 64 now. So I've had, I've had some evolution <laughs> here in my, you know, what I believe, what uh, I will and won't, you know, put up with, so to speak. But, uh, well, especially kids, you know, we've, we've done videos on that dating with adult children and how children can influence a new relationship, either good or bad. Uh, it, again, how, to what extent do we allow that? And friends, yeah, oh, you know, maybe, oh, what are you, why are you seeing, you know, we, we can't let friends influence that. I, I take a pretty hard line on that now. I've kind of got tired of that. Uh, we have to make our own decisions. Uh, but to your question, I, I think I've probably worked on that more than maybe a lot of other women uh, have that seek that approval. I don't seek that approval anymore. Uh, and maybe that's the message here. You know, do, do you really need to seek that approval? It's something to ask yourself. Another thing that c comes up, I think, is that you know, if you go back to the, the crowd that's over 50, there, mm -hmm. obviously there's difference in boomers versus millennials and and Gen Z, the, in terms of the, I'm going to meet a guy and then things are going to change. Mm. That mentality, I think, has to be put aside when you're over 50, because you have to be your own person. And instead of following the whims of your either your friends or what you think might be interesting to a guy, and of course, you want to take care of yourself if it's going to gym and all of that. That's good, because that's mm. also self-worth. But I think women a lot of times don't do enough in terms of pursuing something that they're passionate passionate about. And then if guys come along for the ride, great. So for instance, maybe a woman likes deep, deep, deep sea fishing. Her mm -hmm. friends don't. She just, she grew up with her dad. She fished with her dad or something. She wants to go fishing. First of all, she'll meet a ton of guys if she goes deep sea fishing yeah. <laughs> because there's a lot of guys doing it. But the point is, the beat of your own drummer and exposing yourself to to new things or even old things but things that you care about instead of trying to meet the expectations of a guy or your friends and and, and even going and doing things on your own um mm -hmm. let's say you have you want to learn golf or something and your friends don't well maybe there's a meetup group and you, you can start there and you'll have to be you'll have to be exposed to other people and you'll be exposed to the fact that you can't golf or whatever is the activity. And you'll be forced by doing it on your own to open up and connect with new people just in general. To me, these are all parts of growth. And I think my point is, my long-winded point is, sometimes as we age, we limit ourselves in terms of being exposing ourselves to new experiences. And, and it's so important that we continue to do that because I can tell you as a guy, I go into a room and I see if I'm, if I'm single, if I see a bunch of women across the room, I'm looking for the one with the sparkle in her eye as much mm -hmm. as anything else, because you want some type of passion. And mm -hmm. so many people, men and women, as they age, you can see they get kind of droopy in terms of the vibe they put out there. And to me, it's incredibly important if you want to attract a partner to keep your frequency up, to be interested in new things, to have some passions all about yourself not necessarily about a potential partner, your friends, or whatever. Yeah. Well, you're, you kind of described my life <laughs> since, <laughs> since, since 50. Uh, I, you know, I, of course, uh, kind of going back to how you started this, that, you know, as we grew up in the 70s, etc., uh, I was certainly raised that, you know, uh, of course I was going to get married. Of course I was going to have kids. Uh, but didn't have kids. But, uh, yeah, I got married twice. Bad decisions. And, it, you know, it's, it's my job to take care of the guy. I, I need to make sure he's happy <laughs> mm -hmm. and that I'm not completely complete without a man. I absolutely grew up like that. And coming out of my marriage, you know, I, I, I was going to find that new relationship. And luckily, I think I learned right up front that that's really not what I needed because I, I, I experienced the, the pitfalls of dating <laughs> the, the, you know, the first two years. And I just said, you know what, I, I, I'm just going to have fun. I'm going to pursue what I want to do. And that's actually how we started this channel. I didn't care what anybody thought anymore. So I could talk about topics that I normally would never talk about if I, if I was, you know, was in a relationship because what would he think? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so 
yes, 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 and yes to what you just said. And, and I think what women also have to remember a lot anyway, is that we tend to, especially our generation, we bring something to the table of what we think a man wants. And then once we catch him, <laughs> and I'm, I'm mm -hmm. throwing that around right. a little loosely, but once we, we have, you know, we're in a relationship, then, you know, I mean, the, your real self is going to come out eventually and show. And that's when think, you know, what happened? I didn't, I, this is not the woman I fell in love with. This isn't the man I fell in love with. So absolutely, you know, do go after what you want. And I think what, what women will learn too, and I certainly have, is when you're excited about something, that makes you exciting to the man. Oh, that's, that's and, and that's a big mistake. thing I had to learn. Yeah. What was the, uh, just out of curiosity, what flipped the switch for you? You had two marriages. You said they were both mistakes. And not everybody would say that. And they might say at the time, it didn't seem like a mistake. Obviously, you walked down the aisle. So unless you thought at that time, this is not a good idea. I don't know. <laughs> Supposedly, you know, 90 percent of uh, uh, women who walking down when they somebody did a survey and they found that uh, women, 90 percent of them told them when they knew they were going to get divorced was when they were walking down the aisle. I agree with that. And I, and I cut, I, you don't want to hear my, I mean, I, 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 it was stupid, just absolutely stupid. I, my first, my first, I call it a practice marriage. That was like six months. And, uh, you know, but I got, I was married. So technically I was married twice. And then the second one is 25 years. And I, I knew, I, I knew right away when we got together, this was a mistake, but I have, I was already so far into it. I was worried about what my friends would say, what my parents would say, you know, I had so much commitment in it already, which when looking back, there was no, I mean, it could have been so easy <laughs> just not to do it, but I did. And yeah, I wasn't going to do that again. Uh, the, what's flipped the switch. It took me a while to flip it because I was committed to marriage maybe not even the relationship but to that marriage you know I needed to be married I had 25 years invested with my stupid to throw all this away no nope, I wasn't I'm glad I did <laughs> so do you hear this your story I think it's a great story and it's a it's very representative to me from, mm -hmm. from what you're saying for what I think a lot of women have experienced and are going through do you hear that from other women a similar practice starter marriage long-term relationship neither of them felt right. And then once you've something clicked and then you started living your life the way you wanted to live it on your terms, and then you meet the right guy. I, yeah, I have heard that. I, in, uh, it, yes, absolutely. Matter of fact, two of my best friends who we kind of went through this at the same time, they're uh, high school friends. And uh, that also that was part of the impetus of starting second act when I got back together with my high school friends and realized they were in long-term marriages as well that they were thinking the same thing. I was their unfulfilled God, how could we leave now? And they're both with terrific, actually there's three of them. I forgot about Stephanie. Uh, they're, they're new relationships and they're happier than, I mean, the right guy, they found the right guy. You know, I mean, it's not without its issues like any of us, but yes, absolutely. They're living the life that they want it. Uh, there's also, but, but it takes a while, you know, to backtrack to, to, you have to work on yourself to really get there, know what you want, and then kind of, you know, stick to your guns and not go down the wrong road again. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about um, men a little bit. Uh, this Guys Guys Radio, we're talking about um, how to really ignite a new relationship after 50 and some of the pitfalls and obstacles that get in the way. My special guest, return guest, one of my favorite people, Silka Schwarzkopf of Second Act TV. So let's talk about men a little bit. So you mm -hmm. gave us a very clear uh, picture and it sounded like what I was describing was fairly accurate in terms of what sometimes women go through in, ter in terms of uh, getting to the point where they start to do things on their terms. Guys are in kind of in a different situation. I think what happens with a lot of guys is um, yeah, they're going to look for the woman with the energy uh, for sure. And that's why I think a lot of them, they go young. They, you know, they'll be in a long-term relationship and then they'll be like, I'm going young. Um, I don't know if they do it consciously or subconsciously. I'm not saying it's, it's right. Every situation is different. I think it's sad and it's very tough for the women in, in many cases. But um, once a, when a man though gets blindsided, which they often are, and gets dumped and they're over 50, I think it's really tough for them because they usually don't have the support group that women have and they're not sure how to get back out there because, you know, the last time they were single, they were probably going down out to the bars on Saturday mm -hmm. night. And when you're over 50, 
going, you know, going out to the bar by yourself on a Saturday night. It's, it's a sad affair. I've, I've done it. And I, then, then I was like, no more, whatever. And I decided to work on myself. And, and for me, the key for overcoming any loneliness I had between relationships and I got blindsided a couple of times in long-term relationships was that I said, what am I doing wrong? And mm -hmm. I had the epiphany was that you have to make room in your heart for somebody else. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure that a lot of guys do that or a lot of women do that when they're pursuing, they want to have a relationship because they're lonely. And the moment I realized that, everything changed. And I, I tell the story on different shows, but I was at Thanksgiving and I told my mother, they stopped asking me, when are you getting married? And I said, <laughs> I'm getting married next year. And uh, she said, oh, that's really, who, who is it? I said, I don't know, uh, but I'll, but I'm going to, I'll let you know. And I was engaged a year later. Wow. It is, it is interesting how we, you know, can manifest that. We've, we've talked a lot about that. It's, it's, you know, whether you believe in that or not, the fact is, if you're open to it and, and all of a sudden you're, you're changing, again, your mindset of what you think the possibilities are, and all of a sudden they, they can occur. Gosh, you raised so many points that we could have a, such a long conversation with, you know, one, I think age gap dating. You know, uh, there's we, we've done videos on that on second act uh, both ways. Yes, if you do it for the right reason, of course you can fall in love with somebody older, younger, whatever. Both you know both ways, but have it be because you fell in love and love this person, not because you want to have a trophy on your arm. And right. that's what a lot of men do, and that's what's sad. And it it sure. just you know it, it. I'm sorry, it looks ridiculous. And most men I know that you know think that's ridiculous as well. Uh, but, the, you know, again, that's another topic, you know, the loneliness, the uh, blindsided, that was the other word you said. We a lot of guys, a lot of guys yeah. get blindsided where they're in a relationship long term, and they think it's going okay. And they're not hearing that the woman has some issues. And yeah, whether it's, and it could be that the woman is not being, she thinks she's telling him, but mm -hmm. she's not being clear enough about it, or she's being clear and he's just not listening. And right. I think what usually happens, it's a combination of both. And mm -hmm. then all of a sudden, the bang, the guy gets it and he's like, what happened? And then they try to fix it and it's too late. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, yes. Good point is, is the blind side. And a lot, I think just from, from what I've personally gone through, what I, you know, other experts have said, I just had this conversation this morning with another uh, therapist that I interviewed and that, that came up as well. The whole blind side that, that men tend not to listen. They don't think it's, they don't understand how important it is uh, to actually listen you know, to, to your woman. And what women need to learn <laughs> is, you know, don't talk so much. <laughs> or, or if what, what you do want communicated, communicate it in a way that the guy can hear. But it is ironic, the blind side, that more men feel like, oh, I had no idea this was coming. It's like, how could you not tell? I don't think women feel blindsided as much. I mean, the ones I, no. you know, where, where they're left for another younger woman or something, I think that's a, often blindsided. But for the reasons that most women, especially after 50, the whole gray divorce thing that they leave men uh, is, is, is for other things than, um, you know, it, 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 yeah, it's not, it's not a younger man. <laughs> but let's let's go back to uh, to women for a moment, I, I, because mm -hmm. I just I really want us to help them out because I think sometimes they get caught in that they don't know how to evolve, and I think it's really important that you said you started to work on yourself, and mm -hmm. I started to work on myself. I had an epiphany, and I didn't really do that much different, but things started to come my way, and it, and it was great. And they still they come to my because I live that way now. And good things come to me. And yeah. that's just because I expect it and I'm open to to good things. And sometimes bad things come, but I have a, a, a good mirror to push that self back. Mm -hmm. But I think what happens a lot of times with women is that they still have this old expectation of how things work and they don't take that step to say, what do I want? Mm -hmm. How do I, how, do, how am I going to make myself attractive to me? And then I'll be attractive to the opposite sex or whatever sex they're interested in. But you have to really work and satisfy yourself to be attractive to others. Because if you have issues about yourself, the other person's going to pick up that vibe. Thoughts? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. It's funny. We just did a segment uh, with Dr. Gary Salyer on what I know he's been on your show. Yep. Uh, what does it really mean to work on yourself? Because we say this all the time, just like you and I did, go work on yourself. Well, what does that really mean? And it, it really gets down to identifying how you're wired. I mean, you can, you can put dating strategies, as he said, on there. You can have all kinds of tips, do this, do this, do that. But if you don't know what triggers you, what brings up the stuff that keeps you where you are, then you're probably not going to change. And one of the biggest ones is taking responsibility for what it is that how, how you've created yourself, what you've created, you know, taking that internal look. What so, is it? Right. Why, why am I where I am? And and that's what needs to change, as it did for me, that I don't need to take. I mean, I still do. I take care of Paul. I like that. But not not for, as an ob obligatory is the word I'm looking for, an obligatory thing, just because I, you know, I like to. <laughs> It's part of the I'm instinct. Sure that too, answers right? your question. Yeah, yeah, yeah ab absolutely. So let's come up with some solutions then for both men and for women. So let's uh, let's again talk start with women in terms of maybe you can help articulate this in a way that women will understand. So it's I'm not mansplaining, but you know, taking those steps to think about what what do I want? Why am I in the situation I'm in? Okay, I'm over fifty. I'm single now. What did I? You have to be circumspect, in my opinion, whether you're a man or a woman and say, what did I do right? What mm -hmm. do I really like about myself? What makes me different? What, what can I work on? What maybe was the cause? What, had, what was my role in the demise of my relationships? Why am I alone? Why am I single if I don't want to be? And start from there. And instead of, you know, it's not self-flagation, it's really about circumspection. Um, what do you think? No, absolutely. Absolutely. You have to, you absolutely have to see what, what your role in it was. And, you know, while I talk about, you know, yeah, my marriage has gotten out, blah, blah, blah. I totally see my contribution to why it ended the way it did. And because I started the show and because I received lots of this information, you know, sought this out, interviewed people just on this topic, I realized, oh my God, I did this. I did that. I did this. <laughs> How can I be so stupid? And and then quit doing those things. Like today we talked about that women don't realize how much they criticize sometimes or how controlling they can get, especially as the as the relationship progresses. And that men, they they want to, they, they don't mind what to do, like give me a list, but not how to. <laughs> you know, and and again, that, that that that's a big, big thing that you just figure out what you really what you really want and what makes you happy and what, what makes you know what is it that makes me happy why do i want to be in another relationship and what what does that look like the other or or, or does that yeah what does the relationship look like and and think of the person more in terms of qualities than uh, that's a lot of complaints men have too you know this this uh you know six foot dark hair must you know whatever uh, this image of a prince that you have, throw that out <laughs> because the, the real princes out there, they're, they're quality men that bring a lot more to the table, you know, than, than that's tall, a, dark and handsome. Oh, well, that's a, that's an it's interesting point because I think, you know, when we have this, uh, the longer the list, it seems like the longer you're single, the longer the list can be, and it work, it can work against you. Now, of mm -hmm. course, to me, you, you, you need to have a little bit of a list, but it should be a value driven not mm -hmm. about physical attribute. Oh, you might have a type, okay? That's okay. But you need to be open to the fact that how often does the beauty of a person come through in the first meeting or mm -hmm. even second meeting? It usually takes some time where you really get to know somebody. And I have found very rarely, not, not always, but very rarely has it turned out that I ended up dating my type. Mm -hmm. and and i and i found it to be very refreshing and a, mm -hmm. a surprise but a pleasant surprise like oh wow because i had this idea in my head you know uh, dark hair and this and that and then i ended up with a tall blonde or something and it's <laughs> happened and i'm like wow that's really interesting not that it worked out but and yeah. I, now i do have a, a, a brunette but uh <laughs> <laughs> but i never had a, a must have to me the must have should be value driven not physical attributes. It could be like, listen, I want a woman to take who takes care of herself. Mm -hmm. That's self-esteem sure. issue. That's exactly. a val that's a value. That's not they have to look exactly like this. Mm -hmm. Because you, you can't people have to look and feel the way that 
what, how you see them and want to see them is not necessarily going to bring out their most beautiful aspects. They have to feel it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And well, so, and right? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to talk over no, you. I was no, just no. going to say before I forget that we've done several shows, maybe even one with you, where we touched on this, but the importance of chemistry versus connection that especially in the world that that we're in now, I mean, maybe that's a really good piece of advice because it is so visually driven for both sexes because of online dating. And, you know, you get like how many seconds do you get to get somebody's attention that chemistry can really work against you? you know, is, is you, your, you, the emotions, uh, your hormones, <laughs> you make, you make bad decisions when your attraction is solely driven on, on chemistry. That's why it's important to maybe, you know, if somebody else checks all the boxes or you, or there's an attraction there, maybe, you are not like blown away and, you know, the sparks aren't flying. But if this person has a lot of other things that you have, how, you know, how he makes you feel. Did you have fun on the date? Did you laugh? Is he interesting? You know, maybe you don't want to jump and, you know, jump his bones right then and there, but you might in a couple of months or a couple of day, weeks, maybe even a couple of days. I mean, that's for me, attraction and, and, you know, is so much more than what somebody what somebody looks like it really really is now that being said paul is a really really good looking man <laughs> i mean he's you know women are trying he, so they would say oh so good. yeah sure you can say that look at paul i almost didn't go out with paul because he looked like a player <laughs> i judged him the 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 other way and then really learned you know his heart and and uh my well my ex-husband he, yeah, he was okay look you know it, i grew the same here i wasn't attracted to him physically at all at first but then I got to know him and became attracted. Also, maybe for all the wrong reasons in a way, because that's why, you know, maybe it didn't work later on. But again, the, the, the don't, don't let appearance be so uh, important that you're making all your decisions, you know, on, on, on chemistry or infatuation. Yeah, it changes too, because there's some, I think you've probably experienced this. Sometimes I see somebody like a, a beautiful woman, but she's, she's, on the surface she's beautiful like if you mm -hmm. had to do all the check marks yes. but she doesn't her beauty it, she's not glowing and mm -hmm. there's maybe there's a hardness about she doesn't feel friendly or whatever but whereas somebody may be not quite at that level is much more beautiful because of their vibe mm -hmm. and absolutely so I, and i hear that all the time from both men and women and you know people are resistant to when we say this you know don't like help there has to be chemistry your your relationship isn't going to develop without chemistry but it doesn't have to be overflowing on the first or even second date for that matter that that's probably the hardest thing to either accept or adapt or implement is is giving somebody uh, based on what i'm hearing a second or even third chance uh, for all the right reasons Okay, so we've got let's uh, my special guest Silke Schwarzkopf, host of Second Act TV, Guys Guys Radio. Let's talk about some solutions. Then, so a woman over fifty, she's been in her share of relationships. She's out there now. She wants to start to do things a little bit differently. How can she get back out there in a way that's exciting in terms of exposing herself to new things, not being dangerous by <laughs> doing that, but also putting herself in a position so she can meet new people, new types of men, and doesn't have to rely on her, her friend's, you know, approval or her, anybody's approval, except for herself and, want, yeah. and, and somebody that fits in with her following her own personal passions. What, what should she do? Well, like I said, get out there, F you know, figure out what, what do you like to do? I was, you know, at, at, uh, when I left my marriage, I was a big runner. I mean, I, that's the only way I could get out of the house, you know, is, is if I was going to go, because my husband, ex-husband was extremely controlling. But when I went out to run, I, I often say I ran to my new life. <laughs> <laughs> so running is, you know, it, I, I joined running clubs. I joined, uh, you, you know, every weekend there was something, it, usually running clubs have something once or twice a week yep. in the evening evening have evening runs so that's a great thing if you don't like like running there there's so many things now one of the biggest ones is pickleball yeah. <laughs> that is one of the best activities to meet people because it's a, it's 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 active so you have if that's what you want you know if you want active people that's that's a great option right there not only is it active but it forces you to actually talk it and you can i mean it's just terrific so all 
thumbs up for pickleball. There's club, if you want to play cards, if you want to cook, if you want, you know, there, there's all kinds of stuff you can do. You just, you need to go out and do it. And, and then you have to, if, if you're not quite as out, I mean, I'm outgoing, let's face it. I, I, I don't, I can go into anywhere and talk to whatever. That's not, not everybody's like that. And that's, you know, I, I have plenty of faults, but that's one of my good attributes. But if, if you're not, you can practice that. You can get yourself, um, even, you know, just if you're at the grocery store, if you're anywhere where you're, you know, next to somebody in line or, just look, whether it's a man, woman, child, whatever, but get used to interacting, looking like, hey, hi, oh, you know, wh wait, where'd you get that? Oh, you like that? Just practice interacting because that that's the thing that holds a lot of people back that just don't know how to start that conversation or, or, or start the engagement. I hear that a lot. Yeah, it's amazing too, because now we're, we're talking about people over 50 and mm -hmm. they need to get out there and start talking to other people. Do you mm -hmm. think that's a result of, uh, you know, we're coming out of the pandemic and all of that, and also that everything is done dating-wise is so much of it has moved to online that it's important that people get out there and get back, back to being more organic in terms of meeting people? Well, I think the pandemic certainly has contributed to that. I think it's more of the personality. What, you know, why are you single? Are you suddenly single? Are you, was it, is it you know, divorce? Um, but if you're if you're shy, and there's a lot of people who are shy. I mean, I get this question all the time. Maybe that's why it, 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 I'm focusing on it right now. Is that people are you know hesitant? And then men, on the other hand, because of all the 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 uh, politically correct things now that they have to uh, abide by, uh, for good reason, most of them they, they don't know if they should approach a woman or not. So it's important that women are approachable. And one one way is. By look, smiling, smile is so important. Practice smiling, just stand there with a smile. <laughs> uh, I, I'm being somewhat facetious, but it really makes a difference. And, and where I see that also is like when I edit my interviews and depending on the guest, they can be totally engaged, but you know, if they're, if they're listening intently, so I, I just, I, I've told them, I said, you know, just, just. Right. It, 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 did you see the difference? You know, I look angry one way and much more appealing another way. And that's all it took. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that sometimes is the, because I get approached all the time. I mean, <laughs> I am, a, like I said, I'm approachable. I do look at people and I, people know that they can ask me questions or they can talk to me. And, and that can be developed. You can work on that to where if that's a, a barrier for you, there's way to, ways to uh, you know, make that happen. How about for, for, for guys? That's great advice. Um, but for guys, you mentioned the grocery store. I'm mm -hmm. out here in California. I'm married. If I was single. Mm -hmm. I, go to the, I go to like someplace like Sprouts or Jimbo's or something. The women like this is ridiculous this is better than any place you know if you want if you're in a gym or something obviously mm -hmm. people look good they're working out though you don't want to bother them but you go to these yeah. grocery stores it's like wow what's what's can men safely approach a woman in a grocery store well it's funny that you say that because <laughs> uh, last at costco this happened to me twice now if i'm getting something out of the bag and this oh so you like that? That's that is a good cheese. I said, yeah, yeah. So it's not <laughs> so asking me questions about the cheese, and I'm earnestly, uh, you know, answering about the cheese. And then it hit me to he was he was engaging me. He was trying to hit on me very in a very nice way. But yeah, that that would have had I responded, that would have been, so you know, could have been a great conversation or let somewhere else. And so, yeah. You know, so we pick something up. Oh, is this? Are these the? I mean, there's so it's so easy. I think to 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 engage people in a grocery store again, if for no other reason than just to practice. You know, until maybe you do see someone, hmm. <laughs> and then you know, put it to work in earnest. Mm -hmm. How about in the, in the gym? The women is that like off limits in terms of don't talk to me. I'm sweaty. I'm working out. Or or is it like? Do women also go to the gym to meet guys? Because every guy who's in a gym, he's looking around because you can see the goods right there. That's funny that you, okay, so I'll answer it this way. Uh, me personally, and, and I was a big gym person, I, I don't talk to me at the gym. I'm not here to get hit on. 
I uh, never did. Even when I was on the market, I didn't, I didn't want that. The, the other day, <laughs> again, I'm do I'm on the elliptical. I, I love the elliptical now that I can't run anymore. And I, I work out hard on it. Then I got off and then I, and a guy, nice looking guy come, you know, just comes up goes, you know what you got, you really did well. You did a great workout. That, that was good. You know, good for you. And he said it really nicely and then, and then walked, walked off. Uh, and I thought that, you know, that was nice. And had I been interested, I would have said, and I said, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for you know saying that. I appreciate that. But I could have carried the conversation on. So, you know, definitely don't do it while I'm on the elliptical. Right. <laughs> and then just be, yeah, I, I, I don't know. The gym is, is, is questionable to me Tricky. because tricky. If, yeah. if you really do want to, if you're somebody that works out, you go there to work out, not to you know, necessarily hit on someone. Mm -hmm. So what are the best places for, for, for guys to know that women are open to be being approached? And, you know, sometimes we, we talked about the grocery store, but sometimes, you know, I see the hairs up and the, we got the, uh, the yeah. lemons on and the, you know, the tank top and that's, you know, they're, they look good, but it's maybe not, they're just out there to buy some cider right. or something. So where are the, where are the women want to be approached and sometimes they're not getting approached? Well, <laughs> If you're talking in real life, I there you know a couple of things. I mean, the the first thing that hit me or just came up for me when you asked me that question is online. <laughs> you know, being online is 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 permission to approach me. You're there to meet to meet mm -hmm. someone, or maybe you know dating events, spe uh, speed dating. I, I don't know. They're they're still doing that. Uh, single mingles you know yeah, stuff like I, that is still I, I i call speed dating speed hating yeah <laughs> that that too it's, it's funny somebody else just wanted me to interview the speed over 50 speed dater thing that's why that came in mind but you know anything that that has to do with being single or, or dating obviously is an is an implied uh permission you know to approach after that, I, I think the meetup groups are terrific. If if yes. and you'll know within a few minutes if if this person is there to just play cards or just cook or maybe to meet people, as in uh, you know something wanting something more. One one person that's uh, Stitch dot net Stitch like stitching dot net is a platform for people over fifty just to, just to socialize. It's, it's not, it's primarily friends and then romance. I've had the, the Andrew Dowling, the, uh, the uh, founder has been on several times, a great, great concept. And it takes that horrible pressure of, you know, uh, being rejected right away, uh, you know, away. But, there, but there's lots of platforms that do cater to singles meeting each other, in, you know, later in life. It, it takes a little research. We we have some on on you know our channel and talk about it, but uh, a lot of a lot of women have had are like I won't do online dating. I did it. It was terrible, mm -hmm. and people uh, don't tell the truth and this and that. What's what's and you've talked to all the experts. What what do you say to the women if you had a female friend and she's like I I had a bad experience online dating? Would you say you got to get back out there or mm -hmm. or, or what? Yeah, I think so. I I would because it, it, once you hear, uh, like my my friend Karen is the perfect example. Um, I had already met Paul. Uh, yeah, but I met Paul online eleven years ago, and then when she got divorced and she stayed with me for a few months while she was buying a new place, and you know I, we got her online and had had fun. And she at first she had fun, and oh, this guy is a no, 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 no you know I'm tired of this. I'm not. Doing, this was like four or five dates. And she was, you know, I'm done. Online dating doesn't work. I said, you know, Karen, you, you just, you got to give it more of a chance and you have to be a little bit more open-minded. Yeah, yeah, you're really fit, but you know what, you're older too. Give some, you know, if somebody looks like, you know, they're in their late fifties, it's because they are just like you are. <laughs> Long story short, the, we, she, you know, we, we, I said, come on, let, let's look again. And She's married now because she looked one more time, probably the most perfect guy in her life ever. They're just the cutest couple. They're married now. They've been together, I don't know, seven years or so. Wow. And she's the perfect example of not giving up. Now, you know, if, it's okay to take breaks, obviously, and people do get tired. It, it, it is very frustrating. It can get that way. And it's more frustrating perhaps than it was 10 years ago now with all the apps. But it is really about sifting through 
people and just learning, how, you know, how to navigate that. Yeah, you're going to get the the liars. You're going to get this. If you know what, what you're looking for, you're not going to get caught up in that. And you can get the liars and whatever in real life, too. I mean, I don't think right. that, you know, that's I don't think online dating, uh, you know, holds uh, the, the what am I trying to say? They, it's not just there <laughs> that, that that happens. Okay, a lot of good advice once again from my buddy Silka Schwarzkopf, Second Act TV. Every week there's a new guest or two on there talking about similar subjects. It's all about helping men and women live their best lives, get together, making that crazy jungle of dating easier to navigate. Silka, thank you so much for being back with us on Guys Guys Radio. Let's do it again. We're here to help people. There's so many really good people out there who are lonely looking for a partner and anything we can do to help them get together. And the great work you're doing is so welcomed, I think. So thank you so much for being with us again. Oh, well, thank you for having me, Robert. And thank you for all the time you spend on Second Act. Your input is valued uh, just as much. In fact, one of your videos is taken off like a skyrocket today as we sit here (laughs) i love it we're just like i think people just need to hear from regular folks in terms of how to really just take a step back and say okay what's going on here what can i do better what do i have to offer what do i want and not let the craziness get to them so thanks so much silka talk soon thank you robert if you enjoy the guests and content i bring you each and every week to guys guys radio and guys guys tv please support us by subscribing and following on our channels thank you